Let's review what we have done so far. So we have um, succeeded in making two point function finite up to order lambda r. Okay, so we have made two point function finite up to order lambda r. Okay, remember lambda r and m r, they are finite um, parameters. Okay, they, they have finite values. And the lambda and m which you had in the original theory, they become infinite as epsilon goes to zero. Okay, that is what we have seen. So more specifically at order lambda r, we had this contribution at one loop from the uh, to the two point function. So let, let me just write it. So if you look at the two point function, this is to the lowest order, this just a propagator and then you have this diagram and of course the counter term diagram also. And we made this finite, okay, up to order lambda. And of course there are other higher terms, higher in order lambda, but we haven't done anything for those. Okay, we have uh, whatever calculation we did last time was for order lambda terms. So these are those terms. Okay, because here you have a lambda r and this vertex as you saw is also lambda r vertex. Okay, it's a two point vertex but the order is of course lambda r. And uh, we have found that to make this two point function finite up to order lambda r, the, the constant, the renormalization constants take these values. So z of phi was 1 plus the order lambda r term, uh, order lambda r term turned out to be 0. So it was 0. So it starts at then order lambda r square. Okay, that term turned out to be 0. And then zm square we found to be 1 plus 1 over 16 pi square. Let's check. I think that was correct. Selling. Let me go back and see. This is correct. Okay, and also remind you that um, Z phi, what is Z phi? So you had the field phi in the original Lagrangian that we write, wrote as Z phi to the half phi renormalized. Okay, and um, M we wrote Zm times M renormalized and lambda to be Z lambda times lambda renormalized. Okay. These are, as I told you earlier, earlier, these are called renormalized field and renormalized parameters. And these ones are called bare parameters and bare fields. I guess I said this before, but I'm not so sure. So these are all bare quantities and these are all renormalized quantities. Okay. And as you see that Zm square is a singular, 1 over epsilon term is present here. So when you take epsilon going to ze uh, 0, which is basically going to 4 dimensions, then m becomes infinite. Okay, So at the cost of making these uh, bare parameters fi infinite, singular, okay, we are able to renormalize the theory such that phi r, m r and lambda r are finite objects. Okay, so um, this diagram plus this diagram, okay. So right now I'm 
um, not including the external propagators. Okay, these propagators are not included. You can put a cut. Uh, you can put this little text to indicate that. And you remember, this is what we had defined as minus i sigma. Okay, sigma is for the entire one particle irreducible diagrams. So I will put a subscript one to say that we are at the lowest order. Okay. And this is what we found last time to be i lambda r over 32 pi square 1 plus log of mu square over mr square. Okay, This is good because log should have in its argument, uh, a dimensionless object, right? Otherwise, there is no meaning to the argument, and this is correct because you have uh, mass dimension two in the numerator and mass dimension two in the denominator. So, log has an argument which is dimensionless, and that is how it should appear. And then log of four pi minus Euler gamma e minus sorry minus Euler gamma times m r square. Okay, and um, we know that how a two-point function behaves. So this is one particle irreducible plus these other okay. and they resum to give you um, I times P square minus MR square minus sigma 1 P square plus I epsilon okay. times the residue. So you see that I am uh, this 1 PI includes uh, all order diagrams okay. but here I am restricting to only uh, up to order lambda lambda r that is why I put the subscript one the sigma one and to this order the the physical mass is given by I mean to any order the physical mass is given by the the zero of the denominator or the pole of the propagator pole of this two point function so I should look at uh, where the denominator is zero so what is the value of p square for for which this is zero and that is that value of p square is the physical mass square Okay, because that's the structure, right? You know, it it has to go as uh, I over times some some residue p square minus m physical square. Okay, so I'm just saying that when uh, p square is equal to m p square, the denominator vanishes. So that is why I'm going to take this denominator and put it equal to zero, and the value of p square for which that happens is the physical mass. Okay, so what is the physical mass in this theory? With this choice of parameters, is p given by the condition p square minus m square minus sigma one of p square is equal to zero. Okay, so let's solve that, and it's easy because I mean it's easy anyway. But also note that sigma one of p square is independent of p square up to order lambda. Okay, there was no p square dependence. And you know why? Because this diagram doesn't involve an integral which carries the momentum p. So what do you get? From here you get that um, p square minus m r square minus lambda r over 32 pi square and the other factors. So that is the condition we have and when we solve it put uh, you get that this is 0 for p equal to the, this this object okay which means the physical mass mp square is mr square plus 
lambda r over 32 pi square m r square plus lambda r over 32 pi square um, log of mu square over m r square plus log of 4 pi minus gamma e m r square. Okay, that's the physical mass. So you see that to the lowest order in lambda or lambda r, physical mass is same as the renormalized mass. Okay, they do not differ up to or, uh, at the zeroth order, at the lowest order. Then there is a correction. So physical mass is different from the renormalized mass square. Physical mass square is different from the renormalized mass square by this order lambda r correction term. And of course, these are also the terms which are present. So this is the total correction. And right now, this result is in a particular scheme. It is called MS scheme. Okay, right, because I have in writing this only subtracted a pole term, right? Zm had only a pole term, only the singular piece, nothing, no finite terms. Okay, but as I told you last time, you could also subtract finite terms, meaning you could also subtract this one which is proportional to lambda r or any other term which is which you want to remove proportional to lambda r okay so if you remove log 4 pi minus solar gamma e then that result is called a result in ms bar scheme so you see that the physical mass depends on the scheme okay which is basically a, uh, which, which is uh, equivalent to doing a finite uh, field and mass parameter and uh, this uh, mass parameter renormalization and field renormalization by a finite amount okay but anyway let's um, just say that this is a particular scheme in which we are giving the physical mass okay good um, and also the result depends on mu which is the renormalization scale Okay, and also uh, should again remind you, I think I told here, so fine, good. Okay, now a couple of points. So, this diagram did not contribute a term which was proportional to p square, but as I told, it was very specific to this particular diagram. But in general, let's say, um, um, yeah, in general, you will have p-square dependence, but let's look at a special uh, class of diagrams that appear at two loop. Okay, so at two loop, we will have these kind of diagrams. So this is a two loop diagram. So you see, I'm, I'm dra drawing all the diagrams which are uh, which are lambda r square terms. Okay. So this has two factors of coupling. So it's lambda r square uh, diagram. And then you have this also. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing all the diagrams that contribute to the two point function at order lambda r square. Okay. So this diagram definitely contributes. This also contributes. Then you have this one that also contributes because you have a lambda here and lambda there. This is called sunset diagram in the literature. And these ones are called cactus diagram. Okay, they look like cactus. Okay, so these ones of course again do not um, depend on p square. These integrals do not carry the moment of p square. So the p square dependence is solely in the propagators okay but these integrals do not contain this one is the same situation whatever p enters in here never enters into the loop okay okay and it just goes out without entering the loops but here it will enter so if i draw this diagram um, maybe a little bigger So let's say you put L1 here. And 
L2 here, P you have entering here. Okay, so this will be uh, P L1 plus L2 plus P. That's what will enter here, right? Okay. So now you see that when you write down the integral for this one, it will be what? It will be d d l1 d d l2 okay up these factors also and then you will have i over l1 square i over l2 square and i over l1 plus l2 plus p square okay i forgot to write mr square plus epsilon Okay, and now you see that when you evaluate this integral, the result will depend on p square and mr square. Okay, so this is going to be a function of p square. So you get an uh, dependence on p square, which was absent in this diagram and at one loop. Okay, which means that the z5 will be non vanishing when you go to two loops. This is a two loop diagram. Okay, sorry, not z5 will be not vanishing, z5 will be will be having a contribution at order lambda r square okay so there will be some order lambda r square term coming from these kinds of diagrams okay so z z5 will have a non vanishing order lambda r square contribution Okay, uh, let me go back a little. Yeah, you see Z phi minus one, this term is proportional to P square, right? Because it is coming from the del mu phi del mu phi term. The counter term had a del mu phi del mu phi, del mu phi r del mu phi r. Okay, so there is a P square dependence here and you are going to generate such a term from here as well. Okay, good. So uh, before I proceed um, with new things, let me just also point out that if you were to calculate a two loop, you will have to include many more diagrams, not just the ones which I have drawn. So let me draw them. So of course you have the cactus, and then you will have this diagram. Okay. So all you have to do is take all the vertices that are present okay and connect them in all possible ways with these two external points okay which uh, which will give you the external propagators so you can also draw this is all another diagram that is possible okay and then you have um, these vertices present so you can draw one such vertex connect them and take this regular vertex then you can also have okay then this um, this is also possible and right? because these are both th this vertex is order lambda r so two of these makes lambda r square and then also you have the following so suppose you take this four point vertex Okay. that's you remember this is order lambda r square okay let me show you if you remember how come it's not here here you see this we had this counter term uh, vertex which had an explicit factor of lambda r and because z lambda and z phi are one plus order lambda terms lambda r terms this thing contributes at order lambda r. So lambda r times lambda r, it's a lambda r square term. So this counter vertex is order lambda r square. Okay, and that is what I am using because I am drawing diagrams which are correct up to order lambda r square. So this vertex, if I take, okay, and these are two of my external lines, 
then I can connect it like this. Okay, so this is another order lambda r square term that contributes. Okay, this will bring in z of lambda with it. Okay, add two loops. Okay. Good. So let's now uh, try to make things finite completely at um, at one loop for the five four theory. So we have already renormalized the two point function. Okay. But the goal is that we should renormalize everything, all Green's functions, up to one loop. Okay. So if uh, if there is any function given. Uh, Green's function given to me, I would like to uh, have a finite prediction up to order lambda, lambda r, or uh, let's say up to order lambda r, uh, up to up to one loop. Okay, so I have already done two point function, already renormalized. Okay, by choice of. Um, Zm and Z lambda. Now let's go to a four point function. Okay. This is divergent. Um, now this object is divergent, but we still have Z lambda at our disposal that we have not yet fixed. Okay, so we can hope that a choice of z lambda can fix or can kill the singularities that are present in the diagrams in here. Okay, so let's see what kind of um, four-point functions we have. We have already learned that the general structure of a four-point function is this, that you can write a general four-point function. I should go to the next page, I think. Okay, let's go to the next page. So a four-point function or any n-point function, the general structure is this. We have corrections on the leg. Okay, and the big blob in the center is what is called amputated Green's function, right? That is what we have seen earlier. So if you look at this, then in terms of Feynman diagrams, you get such such diagrams. Okay, I'm looking only at the connected diagrams. Um, so you can have a correction here. You can have a correction here. Or on here. Or here. Okay, these are all possible diagrams. Okay, then uh, remember, we should use all vertices, not just uh, this vertex, but also the counter vertices. So you can also get this diagram. Okay. And how do I remove this? Let's try it this way. Okay, this can be misleading, so I'll does it remove yes. Okay. And you can have this diagram, okay, this is also present. And then um, let's call P1, P2, P3, P4. Let's assign momenta this way. So um, here also. OK, 
Okay, and similarly on all these other diagrams. And then we have P4, then you have um, P1, P2, P3, P4, and then you have So this is P1 and this is P3. So meaning P1 and P3 attach at the same vertex. So here P1 and P2 attach at the same vertex. P1 and P4 attach at the same vertex. This is the diagram in which P1 and P3 attach at the same vertex. This is not a vertex here. Okay, P4 and P2. Okay, this is not a vertex. So these are the diagrams. Is any other diagram missing? So these are all order lambda r square diagrams. There is one more possible, which is this. And because this itself is order lambda r square. So now you see that uh, because we have renormalized um, a two point function and this this part of th this leg, right? This is a two point function. Okay? This is another two point function. Okay? But the uh, divergences in this are cancelled by divergences in this diagram. Okay? So these two together cancel the, all the singularities, these two cancel the singularities. Okay? So they pairwise, the singularities are cancelled in this. Okay. So as far as these diagrams are concerned, they are finite okay, because of whatever we did earlier. But these are one loop diagrams that contain divergences and we have a counter term available to us with a parameter that is with a constant z lambda which is still not fixed and we will try to um, adjust that z lambda such that the divergences contained in these three diagrams, the sum of it is removed. Okay, so our goal is, um, so here let's write that these are divergent in UV and our goal is to adjust Z of lambda such that the, the, the pole UE poles are cancelled in the sum. Okay, so let's evaluate one of these, I mean all of these diagrams, so let's evaluate this. I'm not going to write the external propagators because they are common in all these diagrams. Okay, so See, uh, if I mean I could write the external propagator here, i over p, p1 square minus mr square plus epsilon and similarly for these four, but that's the same here, okay? So you can take, uh, factor that out and whatever remains is coming from the integral in this loop, okay? And the, the, uh, the z factors and everything else in here and that is what I should arrange. Okay, so let's look at this one, p1, p2, so these are the momenta that enter, then you have loop momentum L and this is L plus P1 plus P2 flowing in this direction, P3, P4, okay. And the expression is, um, let me first write down the propagators, so D4 L over 2 pi 
sorry, not D4. D, D, L over 2 pi to the D, I over L square minus M R square plus I epsilon, L plus P1 plus P2 whole square minus M R square plus epsilon. Okay, we have two propagators uh, carrying the loop momenta and this is here. Then I should write down the vertices minus I lambda R over 4 factorial. Okay, there are two of them, so square. Then the combinatoric factor. Okay, so let's check what that will be. So you have these two vertices and I have these four external points. Okay, so P1 can connect to any of this and this, right? So that's eight possibilities. Then this guy should connect only on this vertex. It cannot go to that vertex because that will be a different kind of a diagram. So there are three. And this one can go to any of the four. This one can, gain, can go to any of three. Okay, I should have any of the three. Then this can go to any of the two, this and that. And that one can go to only this one. Okay, 8 into 3 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Okay, which is, a, which is basically 4 factorial. This is 4 factorial. Okay, and the reason you have 1 over 4 factorial here is precisely because you get a 4 factorial. So that cancels times 1 over 2 factorial, okay? You remember, when we are at order lambda r square, we have to include 1 over 2 factorial. If we were at order lambda r to the n, then we would include 1 over n factorial. Okay, so that is this factor. And um, this is now, um, that i square gives you a minus 1. This is a half here. This 4 factorial cancels that 4 factorial, so you get minus half lambda r square d d l over 2 pi to the d Okay, so I will define this integral to be um, I of P1 plus P2 whole square. Okay, and of course it will depend on MR square as well. Okay, so that's the definition. You see this integral is going to depend on, apart from the epsilon uh, or D, these values, right? Because when, look at this integral. This is uh, Lorentz invariant integral. So the result will depend on whatever uh, Lorentz objects you can construct out of it. And P1 and P2 are present, but they are present in the sum. Okay, they appear together, P1 plus P2. So, I mean, very naively, you could say it will, it will depend on P1 square, P2 square, and uh, 2P1 dot P2. But this will not, it will not depend separately on this, but only as p1 plus p2 whole square, right? Because that is what appears here as a sum. So square of this. And of course, mr square and if you want, epsilon also. But let me drop epsilon, it, let, it is understood. So, um, good, let's see this diagram. So this is minus half lambda r square i p1 plus p2 whole square mr square okay now let's see um, this diagram p1 p2 p3 p4 okay 
let's assign loop momentum like this it doesn't matter which way you assign the loop momentum L plus P1 minus P4 okay L enters at this vertex P1 also enters here and P4 exits so L plus P1 minus P4 that's what you have so if you write this integral the expression for this you will get exactly all the factors will be same all the propagators will be the same except for the difference coming here so instead of L plus P1 plus P2 you will have L plus P1 minus P4 square right this one will still remain L square minus MR square so you get exactly the same thing and the expression would be minus half lambda r square the same integral but the argument will be this time p1 minus p4 square mr square okay that p1 minus p4 is coming because of this one this propagator l plus p1 minus p4 okay so the same argument which i gave earlier tells you that the result will depend on p1 p1 minus p4 whole square okay so let me write it down here neatly all the three um, so you'll have the third diagram as well which is which is um, this one and it's obvious that instead of p1 minus p4 you'll get p1 minus p3 okay you can assign the moment and check for yourself that that's what you are going to get okay so let me write it down this will be So I want to define uh, that we have already seen that P1 plus P2 whole square is what is called S. These are the Mendel stem invariants. P3 square, this is called T. And P1 minus P4 square, that is called uh, U. Okay. So this is a function of S and MR square and epsilon also. Okay, the order has changed now. I should have drawn this diagram first because that is what corresponds to this one. But anyway, expression is still correct. T M R square. I of U M R square. Okay, so we have these three terms and um, we should evaluate these so let me evaluate um, i of p square mr square okay instead of choosing st or u i'll just write p square where later i will put p square equal to s and t and u and then add the add these things so this is um, ddl over 2 pi d okay, I'm just writing p now okay, now introduce Feynman parameters so that we can combine, the, combine these two integrands into one okay so this I can write as integral 0 to 1 dx1 integral 0 to 1 dx2 delta of x1 plus x2 minus 1 integral d dl over 2 pi d and then you have 
i square i into i makes i square times x1 of l square minus mr square plus epsilon plus x2 l plus p whole square plus x2 l plus p whole square minus mr square plus epsilon and you have to square it okay and the other factor factor coming from the gamma is 1 in this case because you have only two denominators so gamma and minus 1 that gives you a factor of 1 Okay, now you should integrate over x2 okay, because there is a delta function that integral is easy and um, okay, and that will just leave behind only x1 which you can then uh, use to write the denominator as the following. So check that the denominator will be this L square plus 1 minus x1 p square plus 1 minus x1 2l dot p minus mr square plus epsilon square okay that's what you'll get now you can redefine x to be 1 minus x1 okay and then uh, do the integral i mean change the variables and you'll get the following. So after a little bit of algebra, you will find the following. Okay, now we should do what? We should complete the square. Okay, so let's complete the square. Um, the denominator you can write as, um, this denominator you can write as, L plus XP whole square. You should check that this is something you can get. P square minus MR square plus epsilon. Okay. Now we should shift the momentum. And we are allowed to shift the momentum because we are taking D to be sufficiently small that the integrals are integrals are finite okay so I'll then use that and uh, define k equal to L plus XP or or we can write it more explicitly like this okay with this uh, the denominator becomes k square plus x1 minus XP square minus mr square plus epsilon whole square okay this is what you get after the shift so what's the integral i now so i is integral 0 to 1 dx d d k over 2 pi to the d and then you have i square over um, k square plus x 1 minus x p square minus m r square plus epsilon okay 
Now we should use the formula that I had written earlier. So uh, use integral d d k over 2 pi d 1 over k square minus delta plus epsilon to the capital N is this is the result which I had um, obtained earlier. So in that I should put capital N equal to 2 and um, and what and delta to be mr square minus x times 1 minus x p square okay, because here delta has a negative sign in front of it. Okay, so using this I get I to be um, this factor of I square, then you have I coming from here, then minus 1 to the 2 which is 1 and you have 4 pi d over 2 then you have gamma of 2 minus d over 2 okay capital N is 2 so this thing over gamma 2 and then you have integral 0 to 1 dx and uh, 1 over mr square minus x 1 minus x p square minus epsilon okay this entire thing to the 2 minus d over 2 okay so that's what we get and you see that you get a simple pole from here okay so let's uh, extract that pole we are almost there so 4 pi four pi to the four minus two epsilon over two is four pi square times four pi power minus epsilon. Okay, and gamma of two minus d over two is gamma of epsilon and gamma of two is one. Okay, so with that I get i is equal to um, minus i over 4 pi square times let's expand the what has happened okay so uh, this i square uh, this minus 1 square is 1 this i square is minus 1 so minus i okay so that is why you have a minus i and this 4 pi square from here Okay, and this 4 pi to the minus epsilon I'm going to take care of. Yeah, and this, in, this is in the denominator. So, this will go into the numerator. It will become 4 pi to the epsilon. Okay. So, here uh, expanding the gamma around epsilon equal to 0, you will get 1 over epsilon minus order gamma plus order epsilon term. Then you have coming from 4 pi to the epsilon 1 plus epsilon log 4 pi plus again order epsilon term times 0 to 1 dx 1 minus epsilon log of mr square minus 
x1 minus xp square minus i epsilon plus order epsilon square terms. Okay. This epsilon is different. Okay, now all we have to do is multiply all these terms and look at the singular finite yeah, singular and finite terms and drop the order epsilon terms. So, this is equal to um, minus i over 4 pi square to integral 0 to 1 dx. You should check that this is what you get. So you get a 1 over epsilon. How do you get? When you multiply this 1 over epsilon with 1 here and with 1 there. So that produces the most singular piece. Okay. Then uh, the finite terms. So look at minus gamma e times 1 times 1. That's minus gamma e. Okay. Then you can take the order epsilon term and multiply with the singular term here and with the one here. So that gives you log 4 pi. Okay. And then you can similarly multiply, multiply this order epsilon term with the pole term here together with this one that will give you log of this object. Okay. So that's the result I'm writing. you'll always find this log 4 pi minus Euler gamma at one loop. Plus order epsilon terms. Okay, good. So now we see how the singularity looks like. Okay, for that diagram. Okay, so the contribution of this is now um, we have to multiply with the factor of minus half lambda square i of s m r square. Okay, that is what this diagram is. So minus half lambda r square uh, times minus i over 4 pi square. So I'll combine it. It gives you i over 32 pi square lambda r square times 1 over epsilon min plus log 4 pi minus gamma e and this term minus integral 0 to 1 dx log of mr square minus x 1 minus x s minus epsilon. Okay, this is p1, p2 and then you have this diagram. Okay, let's go back. This one involved p1 minus p4, that is u. Okay, so let's write this. So this is again the same thing. Let me see if I can just copy paste. See, I can do it again. Yes, I can. Okay, good. So here I should have uh, u and here I should have t. So let me do that also. Okay. 
this will be u and this will be t what is it it right okay and this is um let me draw the diagram differently okay let's draw it the same way as i drew earlier uh, which was p1 p3 and p2 p4 okay, it looks ugly but that's what it is okay so i have to add up all these uh so let's look at the singular part or the, the sum of the three sum of all these is equal to um see, see these these terms are the same in all the three okay so it becomes three times of that so 3i over 32 pi square lambda r square 1 over epsilon plus log 4 pi minus euler gamma okay plus or minus i over 32 pi square lambda r square times this integral 0 to 1 dx and then you have um, all these terms okay that you can fill so good now we are almost there except for the fact that i have forgotten one term which is this this also contributes right this i should include okay so let's write down the contribution of this um actually i should not have deleted It doesn't undo shift command c no does it no. so let me go to the next page or maybe here itself let's see whether it works so this one um Where is that? So for this one we have uh, minus i. Okay, I think it's a bad idea to write here. Let's go to the next page. So this is equal to um, minus i mu to the two epsilon. Okay, lambda r over four factorial. and then you have z lambda z phi square minus 1 okay you have a z phi square because you have four lines coming out because it's a vertex coming out of four fields okay that that is the vertex that we had earlier let me show you here you see minus i lambda r over 4 factorial mu to the 2 epsilon and this piece okay and remember this is lambda r square vertex okay good but then uh, you have to have combinatorial factor factor which is four factorial because if you look at this vertex and you want to connect this p1 p2 p3 and p4 okay this one can go to any of the four then the second one can go to any of the three okay four any of the three then any of the two then one so that's four factorial Okay. and then you also have 1 over 2 factorial because we are at order lambda r square 
okay, in the perturbation theory. So uh, now to cancel the infinities, I require that the sum of um, this singular piece, let us work in MS scheme, minimal subtraction, I will remove only the 1 over epsilon pole. So, so this together with the counter term sh should vanish. Okay, And because I am interested in only in the pole, this epsilon I can put to 0. Okay, so or, or you can think of expanding it in powers of epsilon and you pick up the first term which is 1. Okay, And you are not interested in um, epsilon log mu square term. So then you get 3i, this is what you have on the previous page, 3i over 32 pi square lambda r square 1 over epsilon. Let's see. 3i over 32 pi square lambda r square 1 over epsilon. That is what I have written here. Plus this term which is minus i over 2 that is coming from here. 4 factorials have cancelled. Then you have lambda r. Okay. And then here z lambda is 1 to order lambda. So I have only z phi square minus sorry z phi is 1 to order lambda. Okay, it is 1 plus 0 plus lambda r plus some number times lambda r square. So z phi I am going to put 1 and here you have z, phi, z lambda minus 1. Okay, and that should be finite. Or because I am working in minimal sub minimal subtraction scheme, I choose that finite to be zero. Okay, that's an MS scheme. Okay, and from here I can find that um, so that I goes away, and I get z lambda is equal to. 1 plus 3 over 16 pi square lambda r times 1 over epsilon. Okay, you see that with these choices of zm, z lambda and z phi, I can make both the two-point function and the four-point function finite. Okay, so let me collect the result here. zm square was Okay. One over sixteen pi square, one over epsilon lambda r, and this one is. 1 plus 2 16 pi square lambda r 1 over epsilon. Perfect. Okay, so with these choices, I can make the two point function finite up to one loop and also the four point function finite up to one loop. Okay, and uh, do I need. Um, Okay, how about uh, whether I need um, more more parameters or more constant to fix, um, let's say a six-point function or a eight-point function? Okay, do I do I need those? I will leave it to you. Think about it. Actually, we have already talked about this earlier, and then I will uh, continue the discussion in the next video.